Hey, it's Scott Christopher with my wife, Liz, and we're going to talk about how to raise young children, specifically young boys, like infant through elementary school years, and what to do with poopy diapers and husbands who don't cooperate. Stick around. Right, so we're talking today about uh, raising, uh, taking care of, handling, nurturing, Little kids. Little, littler boys. Uh, kids, little kids, but you know, our experience has been boys. We assume that some of this will bleed over onto the other gen. Ugh, that sounds disgusting. That will, I mean, keep this. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I think apply. raise. Apply. Thank you very little much. Kids. Applies to little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of all genders, right? Oh, for sure. This is Liz, my wife. I'm Scott Christopher, and uh, we've raised some sons. So let's talk about uh, some of the common things that people face when they're dealing with the younger set. Go. Tired. You're always tired. Wow. We had five kids. You know, I was thinking the other day, we had four boys, seven and under. Do you realize that? Yeah. At yes. a time when you were gone all the time. And it wasn't really like we, busy. but we didn't have them in rapid, I mean, to some people you'd go, that was pretty every rapid. Every couple, Every two, two and, and a half, half years. years. So it's not like Except it's just. Except for the fourth was every two years and that made a difference. Yeah. It so, was so, but at harder. some point, so we have five boys with an age range of 10, ten years, years. Yeah. From the youngest to the oldest. And exhaustion is uh, a factor. So what, how do, how do we battle that? What's some advice on how to get over that? Or can you? Oh, gosh, my biggest help is I had this girl down the street because you like one time you traveled, you were gone for six weeks straight mm -hmm. and I was alone with the five boys and having someone I could count on. She was a teenage girl down the street named Katie, who was like this amazing. She was amazing with the kids and I could call her and she could come over and I could get a break. Because you don't sleep, you don't, I mean, you're just constantly So you're going. basically talking about a babysitter, or right. is and it I'm, more than that? You know what I mean? Well, like, it has to be some, yeah, it was a babysitter, someone to help you when the crazy got too much. Right, and there's no price that you won't pay to be able to get a break from that, right? Right, I mean, I mean and I'm lucky because I had someone I could trust that I could say, just, just give me an hour to recoup. But at that point, when you were gone all the time, and I couldn't, ever get away it was like okay I've got to have a break but now I look back and boy do I miss that stage yeah so just the busyness and I'm glad I had kids when I was younger I think I, we had our first when I was 24 and just the amount of energy you have at that age compared to now I'm glad we had kids when we were younger and we could keep up with them and do all the things you do. Yeah, I think that's useful what you're saying because, you know, obviously the trend, I mean, it does barely even is worth mentioning, but the trend is to marry older now and to start having your family older, but just have a smaller one. And, and you know, those are There's choices. There's benefits that, to that, absolutely, I'm sure too. Because, you know, the generation that's sort of in that age range right now is very adventurous. They, they, they're, they're curious about the world. They, they want to fill the, the adrenaline needs that they have. So they're, they're very much, I'm not going to say in a negative way, but they're very self-centered when they're in those younger years. And so it's like, I want to see the world. I want to jump off a bridge. I want to go skydiving. And I want to do that before I settle down and start having children. But what you're saying, I think, is very is something to take into consideration if you are a younger person watching this and you're considering you know a, a relationship that could lead to something like family and children is your energy level when you have those kids is important yeah. but the older you get the less energy you have because you want to plan how many can i go for a decade without sleep like if you want to space your kids i mean seriously yeah. you really don't sleep through the night for a decade yeah or more right because we had our last one then so probably 12 years of not sleeping through the night but for me i've loved having a large family i mean it's hard when they're young but it's worse when they're teenagers yeah, yeah. what you say now when you're dealing with young young kids and particularly in our case boys um, what did you find was uh, helpful in terms of getting them through to and through elementary school, you know, and getting good grades? Was that important to you? You know, how, how much of a premium do you put on straight A's when they're in well, third grade, you know, or whatever? But third grade is pretty easy to get 
straight A's. Well, not for everyone, though, right? right? I mean, we had some kids that couldn't get straight A's but if they it's were. Third grade. I think to them. the most important thing is the social development, them feeling secure, them. So, what do you do for that? Well, I mean, so let's give them some concrete suggestions. We then. did lots of family activities, we were together a lot then. And just going, and it could have been going on a hike. It could have been going to Ch Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, yeah. And remember when they had that pizza special? So uh, going <laughs> to the park, we always did cheap, fun things with the kids. And when they're young, they think everything is great. They're so easy to entertain because, oh, we're going to the park. Awesome. Yeah. You know, or just going and riding your bikes in the church parking lot, whatever. But we did a lot of physical activity when they were younger because it seemed like there was just so many. We always so had pool many. passes if we could get them. Oh, yeah. We went hiking fairly frequently, the teaching them to ride the bikes. Again, we talked in another video about how I taught them how to drive, and she's bitter about that. But I also, she, but those are the things where I go, do you want to teach them to drive? I did and she teach says, them no. to ride their I, bikes. You did? Yeah. Which, let's let's be specific now. Which ones did you teach to ride bikes? Where you Don't literally you ran with them. Yes. You ran. Yes. And held them up. Yes. Which ones? Josh, Matt, John. You don't. This is why memories can't be trusted after 20-something. Exactly. So uh, anyway, my point is, is that, uh, you know, doing, yeah, doing as much as you possibly can. Now, uh, talking about discipline. Because people wonder, do I spank my kids? No. Do I yell at them? No. Uh, what if they ruin and destroy something? What if they tear things apart and, and they did it on purpose because they were being bratty? What was, oh, yeah. what was your philosophy Remember on all of that? Remember when one of ours took a knife and went through all the screens and just... <laughs> all the screens on the windows. No, I don't. I was just seeing what it would be like. My memory said. does fade. I but guess. how do you really discipline that? I can't even remember what I did because it's such a random act of vandalism. <laughs> well, we had a pool like table. Eight was and it just the same kid that put the pool balls down yeah, the toilet. Yeah, but he was young then. You can't. No, I that. know, but yeah, or you know, taking a thing and scraping the neighbor's brand new car. Just <gasps> oh yeah, he wrote his know, name in rocks on the neighbor's car. Pretty hard to identify the culprit on that one. Again, this was a six, five, six-year-old kid. Right, though. right. They don't really know. So how do you discipline that? It has to be in what they can understand, and you know, we don't write on neighbors' cars. Oh, we forgot to cl go over that in the list of rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't stick air compressors in our brother's ear. We didn't go over that one, too. I remember, do you remember when Josh did that? He stuck the air compressor in Scotty's air, and, and turned it on. He said, well, you never told me not to. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I guess what you're saying There's is... There's not a lot of common sense be, at that be age. Be patient with them and recognize that they're... Remember how you were at that age, if, if you can. I don't think they're purposely no. being bad. No. They just don't think. And so a lot of it was just explaining our expectations. But really, we never spanked. We would do timeouts if they fought yeah. with their brothers. Things that they knew were wrong, there was a discipline for. Like, you're going to get a timeout for that. Tell your brother you're sorry, those type of things. But it's good to have, if you can, have a partner who, like in the case of my wife, who is just, and a lot of mothers are anyway, but just much more patient. The milk of human kindness <laughs> runs by the court in every vein. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they just have a certain level of calm because I would normally get kind of bent out of shape about stuff like just that. Just when you're hearing about it Just now. hearing about it now, it gets my dander up. But, <laughs> but I was also the kind of father who definitely became a champion Diaper changer. I, you may not remember, but I changed a lot of diapers. I would get my hands dirty. And you know what I would say to do it? What would I say? Right. He had to pretend he was working in a chemical factory so he could manage to change a diaper. What, what this difference does it make what I pretend? It's like you had to act your way through it. Well, my point... What? Oh gosh! Oh gosh! No, yeah. no, no. Yes, you did. Okay, oh, stop. No, you're just... That's just a lie. What I was trying to say is, is that like the first couple of times that I had to change poo, I had to tell myself, this is no worse than like being working in a dog food factory or, or chopping up horses for glue or just pretending that you're just, you're dealing with something filthy and you have gloves on and you're, except in this case, you don't have gloves on. But, you know, I watched her do it and you know, you pick them up by the ankles 
you know, and wipe it all off and you don't ball it all up. You remember being, I'm going to throw up, I can't do You're this. You're thinking of your children. Oh, that the was older Christian. sons did yeah. that. I was not dramatic. That's true. I he wasn't. They're that my was... sons. I'll clean anything they do. And then I, when I'm done, I, take that back. I lay them good. right here on my chest, on the couch, and they and pat their back and or whatever. And they fall asleep, spread eagle on dad's chest every yeah. last one. And babies them. like you way more than they like me. Right. Yeah, they do. You're, because I'm me. <laughs> Hey, if you enjoyed our brief little journey down memory lane in an effort to at least uh, introduce the idea of raising young boys and how to just be cool with it, we're glad you liked it. We're glad you came. So join us for our next one right here and uh, subscribe. It'll make it easier. Some notification will come. 